This is one of the most significant group photographs in the context of the making of modern India. Taken on the 24th of January 1950, it has the members of the Constituent Assembly gathered in what is today the Central Hall of Parliament House to append their signatures to the final draft of the Constitution of India. A document that laid down the principles and the very moral fibre of the new nation. Two days later, on the 26th of January 1950, the constitution came into effect transforming the dominion of India into the Republic of India. But why was the constitution adopted almost two and a half years after India gained independence? Because its formulation was a Herculean task and the leaders of the nation spent a total of 165 days debating on topics like the Uniform Civil Code, reservations, abolition of the death penalty, states' rights, the national language and federalism. These discussions were held against the backdrop of the bloodshed of partition, the beginning of the Kashmir conflict, Mahatma Gandhi's assassination and the complicated political integration of over 300 princely states in India. The Constituent Assembly, consisting of indirectly elected representatives, met for the first time on the 9th of December 1946 and got started on framing a constitution where all power and authority would be derived from the people. People who were profoundly diverse, largely illiterate and poor. Jawaharlal Nehru expressed the hope of the Assembly in these words. The first task of this Assembly is to free India through a new constitution, to feed the starving people and to clothe the naked masses and to give every Indian the fullest opportunity to develop himself according to his capacity. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was chosen as the chairman of the Constitution Drafting Committee for his legal acumen and he led the assembly to draft the world's longest constitution with a solid foundation of justice, liberty, equality, unity, integrity and democracy as its leading values. Significant contributions were made by 15 women members of the assembly who brought unique perspectives to the table. In his last speech to the Constituent Assembly on the 25th of November 1949, Ambedkar said, If hereafter things go wrong, we will have nobody to blame except ourselves. Ambedkar also took the opportunity for some plain speak on his worries about the road ahead, worries which exist even today. He said, I am of the opinion that in believing that we are a nation, we are cherishing a great delusion. How can people divided into several thousands of castes be a nation? The sooner we realize that we are not as yet a nation in the social and psychological sense of the word, the better for us. For then only we shall realize the necessity of becoming a nation and seriously think of ways and means of realizing the goal. He added, there is great danger of things going wrong. Times are fast changing. People including our own are being moved by new ideologies. They are getting tired of government by the people. If we wish to preserve the constitution in which we have sought to enshrine the principle of government of the people, for the people and by the people, let us resolve not to be tardy in the recognition of the evils that lie across our path. The next day, on the 26th of November 1949, the constitution was adopted. But the Constituent Assembly decided to enforce it on the 26th of January 1950 to commemorate the day when the Indian National Congress had proclaimed Purna Swaraj in 1930. Thus, two days before the adoption on the 24th of January 1950, members of the Constituent Assembly gathered to append their signatures to the English copy of the Constitution. It consisted of 1,17,369 words and was completely handwritten by calligraphist 
Prem Bihari, Naren Rajada, and illustrated by a team led by artist Nand Lal Bose. The illustrations are drawn from the history and the legends of India and range from the Indus Valley Civilization period to the scenes from the freedom struggle. This made sure that the constitution reflected an India that was rooted in its past while also looking towards the future.